If you are a professional Photoshop user who wants to venture into 3D modeling, sculpting, UV mapping, or texturing, I found a very great 3D program for you. Very easy to use, I promise you it's way easier than the easier experience you would get with Blender, Cinema 4D, or maybe Maya. Cool features with some quirks. I mean, by now I'm sure you are saying, oh James, come on, every software has got quirks to it. Well, let's talk about 3D code. I remember when I tried 3D code for the first time. The first question I asked myself was, what is wrong with this company? How come only a handful of dudes have heard of this software? 3D code has not been searched for more than 200,000 times on YouTube. I can't tell you about Google, but this is so bad. If the company really wants to get 3D code into a lot of people's homes and also get a lot of companies to use it, then personally I think the approach the company has taken to get 3D code into many schools across the world is not that great of a strategy, especially in these modern times. A lot of softwares already exist in those places and those people in actual sense don't need something new to learn. Sell it to us, the guys on the streets. The only reason people in such schools would consider 3D code as their daily go-to software would be when we receive a breaking news that Autodesk or Magazine has collapsed all in the same day. Also softwares like Blender and certain apps offering students licenses is going to make 3D code's usage data a messed up love story no one would love to share to their kids. The marketing strategy is very poor. Okay, enough of the problems I have with this software. 3D code is a sculpting and texturing package, often compared to ZBrush and Madbox. But it goes a step ahead of these softwares adding a UV unwrapping feature. If you want to experience UV mapping on a different level, maybe you should try this software. It might be what you've been looking for all these years. Now, the details I'm about to get into might not be friendly to newbies. I don't have any better way to say it, but I will try my best. The big difference, setting apart 3D code and other sculpting programs are what they call voxels instead of polygonal meshes. Now, voxel is the combination of the term pixel and volume. Just imagine voxel as the 3D equivalent of pixels. Voxels produce a virtual grid in 3D space with its mesh, then occupies sections of the grid to form its shape. Some great examples of low resolution voxels are common game styles like uh, Minecraft and Roblox. While voxels are based on cubes, the high resolution of grids makes achieving a smooth curve possible, similar to how polygonal meshes are flat planes that can make smooth curves by having a high number of polygons and using smoothing groups. That's exactly how Voxel works. The end of the whole story. Meh. I hope you got this one. Since the mesh in 3D code uses Voxels, you do not need to subdivide polygons, which can give you better performance on average PCs. The other benefit is that your 3D object is solid and isn't just um, a shell like a polygonal mesh. This makes some sculpting and deformation techniques much, much easier. 3D code primarily markets itself as a texturing and sculpting program. Its sculpting tool behaves similarly to other programs. However, there are no topology restraints in 3D code that you may face in other programs. This is due to its voxel-based workflow. 2. It comes with dozens of brushes built in to aid your 3D project with all the ability to add more brushes based on whatever you need. There is a nice long list of brushes on their website you can check out. 3. After you have completed a sculpt in 3D code, you are given the option to export directly for a 3D printing using their wizard. This makes 3D code an excellent choice for aspiring 3D printers. 4. Voxels makes solid models similar to that in CAD softwares, so it's much easier to convert it to a format every 3D printer can interpret. It's a useful feature if you want to print off small models of your sculpt. 5. 3D code allows you to texture your mesh. 
you can create textures up to 18,000 resolutions using their large scale and preset brushes and materials. Similar to Substance Painter, 3D Coat is able to calculate and big ambient occlusion and curvature maps from your mesh and then use this with smart materials. These materials can do things like add areas or worn out paint and rust onto corners of your model where those things are more common. 3D Coat has got some downsides to it which aren't that much of a big deal but very bad for business. 1. You get a software going for $99 for personal projects which most freelancers would appreciate. And then for people wanting to use it on a more professional level you get to pay $379 or $380 somewhere there about. Doesn't sound like a big deal to people who already know how to use this software. But if you are a newbie. Well, I like the fact that it's so easy you can try using it on your own, but we all know that doesn't help. We need more tutorials. At the moment, the only place you get tutorials are their own main YouTube channel and also their website. It's not enough. We need courses tackling the use of its features from different perspectives. Pay people to do more courses for you. 2. These two for modeling are very limited. And this is where softwares like Blender or 3ds Max becomes a favorite. A lot more work has to be done in order to get it to the level where people wouldn't have to look back. But as it stands now, modeling in 3D code isn't a good idea. 3. Its shaders are bare bone. Bare bone. Every 3D artist understands this term. For that matter, people will tend to lean towards Substance Painter the more, especially when it comes to complicated materials that react dynamically to the environment but i get the fact that they are advertising it a complete sculpting tool and not a complete texturing tool so you definitely know what you're going in for when you decide on purchasing this software four it's not widely recognized in bigger industries like zbrush does also it's not widely known as compared to blender so the possibilities of you being alienated in a 3d production field is very high Softwares like this should always be mastered but kept as secondary unless you are new to 3D but if you already use an industrial level 3D software then this would always come in secondary or maybe primary if you still find it very useful in your day to day workflow. Number 5. There is still an issue with importing objects from other softwares when working with skills. skills. There is no better way to say this. There are other issues to it but I decided not to talk about those because it's mostly not a universal problem. You might be facing some other challenges because your machine just can't work. That's it. And that's mostly going to be on you so I'm not going to address those problems. Okay I'm done. Kindly don't forget to like and sub to help the YouTube algorithm push this video to more audience. See you in my next video.